there, this is Anna Aspinas from Anna Aspinas Designs and today I want to share a little bit more about my project 2016. I've been doing variations of this project for about 10 years now and in the last few years I have been sharing my project and kind of evolved into a, um, a comfort zone in which I combine photos uh, with art to create a photo book and a um, memory keeping keepsake that sort of sums up my year and also sums up the season, the holiday season. Um, why do I do it? Um, it allows me to be present at the holiday, during the holidays when it's chaotic um, in my house. Um, I find schedule the time to do these pages between wrapping presents and creating these sorts of videos and it also allows me to put down to paper some of the reflections that I have at this time of year. Um, I often am thinking over the past 12 months as we start um, coming to the close of the year and it provides a place um, for me to put some of those reflections down and to share some of the stories that um, have happened over the year that haven't kind of made it on to my pages. Um, it's an exercise of creativity um, in which I can um, experiment and play and then also too it's a last ditch attempt in order to kind of create some sort of lasting memory um, of the current year. So lots of good reasons to do this project. Um, typically over the last couple of years I've created an album and I have shared um, my process on my blog. Last year I actually ran a class which went really well, um, although it kind of covered more of the technical side of the, um, the process than it did the actual um, techniques and putting the pages together. So in 2016, I'm offering a set of templates and these are going to basically guarantee that you will get an email imp uh, prompt to your inbox every day, um, providing some simple imp inspiration for your page. And then over on my website at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com, I'm also I also have what I'm calling the Project 2016 Experience. Um, this is an additional offering, and it's really going to provide you with an um, insight to my process. And my plan is to record all 25. Um, layouts that I create in this project and I'm going to be sharing not only the nuts and the bolts behind and the mechanics of putting a template album together that's going to be done mostly via PDF downloads but in the videos I want to talk about um, the decisions I make when I'm creating the pages, why I choose certain photos, why I place um, supplies in certain areas. We're going to be talking about design and color and um, all of the good stuff that kind of draws a page together and draws all those elements together to make it visually um, appealing. And we're going to do this quickly and simply and we're going to have some fun and hopefully I'm going to be able to share some techniques. So my daughter is a bit ahead of ahead of the game and decided that Christmas was going to start this weekend. And so I was able to snap a few pictures and get a head start on my project. Apparently Christmas is starting early in the Aspinus household. And of course this gives me an opportunity to kind of give you a sneak peek of the kind of video that you can expect in the Project 2016 experience. So I thought I'd go ahead and put the first page together and um, share some of my kind of decisions and my thoughts as I work um, with this first page. It's funny how that works out. Um, the timing is impeccable. So you can see that I have the first Project Template album number from Project um, number one. So it's the first template in the series of the project template album number two. There's another set of templates from last year in the store um, if you wanted to go and check out those. Um, I tend to use the um, templates in order and I'm going to be showing you how to manipulate those templates as, um, as we work through the series. Um, but you can of course switch them up and use them in whatever order that you want. And you can see that we have a mask with various layers. If you look in my layers panel, all of the layers are 
um, labeled and um, there's an eye icon next to each layer and this allows us to switch the layers on and off just in case we um, don't need them all and I know for sure that I'm not going to be needing all of these frames um, I've selected two photos um, I'll be talking in the course about how to select photos and why I select certain photos and not others. So you can see I'm just kind of switching these layers on and off. It's kind of good to switch them on and off, first of all to kind of see where they are and also to see what the template looks like without certain um, elements. And then of course once you start switching layers off this is going to necessitate um, the, um, the um, you're going to have to basically move um, other other elements in order to kind of reposition some of those elements on the page. So I've um, selected the auto select box and then this allows me to kind of click on any of the layers and you can see how the bounding box then picks up um, whichever layer my, um, my cursor is touching. So I want to kind of just move this up here like this and we'll just move that up and then if I select the tape you can see the tape is on one layer um, so I can move that up um, if I want to like that and then um, we'll probably worry about that one later if you wanted to separate it simply select the marquee tool from the tools panel select the tape and then go edit cut edit paste and then select the move tool from the tools panel just uncheck that auto select box so you don't end up clicking on any of the other layers in the layout and then this allows you to move each of those tapes independently. So I'm going to start off with this. I know I have two photos so let's go ahead and grab those first and I'm going to always start with the largest mask and, and the most prominent focal photo and I will obviously talk about that in class two as we go through. Um, whether I'm going to use a focal photo, whether I'm going to use a digital art supply or other sort of image. I'm going to increase the size of this photo by holding down the shift button on my keyboard and dragging outward with the bounding box. If you're working in Photoshop Elements obviously you would make sure that you have that constrained proportions box checked when you have the move tool selected and that will allow you to resize your photo proportionately. And then I'm going to go to layer, create clipping mask and then clip that down. And the mask doesn't really fit our photo very well. So but there's a few things that we can do here. If I hover my cursor over the corner of the bounding box, you can see the arrow changes from a double ended diagonal arrow to a double ended arced arrow and at this point you can click down and rotate and this kind of just gives us a better orientation for our image and I'm just going to make it a little bit larger and then click that check mark to accept that transformation and we're missing a lot of the facial features here so one of the things that I like to do when I'm working with the facial features is to select that mask layer Select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. Ensure that your for and background color in the tool, tools panel are at default by clicking on the small icon at the bottom here. So you want to basically set your foreground color as black and then go ahead and select a brush. And I'm using one of the Anna Blends Artsy brushes um, from the number four um, pack in the series. And that's available from the Anna Aspinus Design Store at O scraps and then I'm simply just going to paint directly onto that mask in order to bring back some of those facial facial features and then you can see also that we have a problem with this line that's running across you can see the photo doesn't quite cover the um, the mask and there's a few things that we can do here. We can extend the photo or we can simply blend the photo. Before I had, go ahead and do that though, I'm going to recolor um, some of these uh, stains that are protruding from the outside of the mask. If you look beneath the photo blends layer in the layers panel, you can see we have multiple layers underneath. And this kind of helps bridge the transition from the photo 
to the background, but they certainly don't look that great in the colors that they're in at the moment. So one of the things I like to do is to um, recolor some of those. So let's select this first one. And because it's a Christmassy layout, I'm going to use the colors in my um, photo in order to complement um, the image. So I'm going to select that stain layer, go to Edit, Fill, ensure that you have that Preserve Transparency box checked, click on Color, open up your Color Picker, and then just sample one of the colors in your image. So I'm going to go with that red and click OK, and you can see that that now changes. And then you can do the same with some of these other stains. So let's go to Edit, Fill, Color, and this time I'm going to sample from um, another area of my photo, a dark kind of chocolate brown. Click OK. And then finally we have this one over here. Select the Auto Select for this one. It's picking up the photo, so you have to locate the, the stain layer in the Layers panel. And then go to Edit, Fill, Color, and click OK. So now you can see we've got these complementary colors happening. Um, but we've still got this issue with this line that runs across the top here. You can use a layer mask and a brush. I'm just going to simply select the eraser tool from the tools panel and just go in and just carefully um, just kind of get rid of that harsh line that runs across the top there. The other thing you can do too is you can recolor the mask if it's protruding out from the edge. So if I go to Edit, Fill, and perhaps go with a lighter brown, click OK and click OK, you can see now that it's just a slightly smoother transition. And then you might want to um, recolor that photo. I've got various actions that I use and, and processes and I'm going to make those available to the students of my class. But a few of the things that you might want to do is to adjust the color. So if you go to the tone, you can do auto tone or you can go to adjustments and go down to color balance. And then this allows you to change the yellows, you can see how I can kind of get rid of some of that yellow and I can increase the cyan. I kind of want it slightly on the pinker side just so that it coordinates with some of these reds that are kind of coming out. Uh, repetition um, creates unity and kind of brings um, an image and a collection of elements together. So click OK. And then the other thing we can do is we can brighten this image. So we can go to Image Adjustments and if you're working in Photoshop you have the option to use curves and you can click anywhere on this diagonal line and drag it upward to just introduce some light into your image and then you can also drag it down to kind of increase the contrast and click OK. If you're working in Adobe Photoshop Elements you can go to Image Adjustment Levels and then you can change the brightness and the contrast um, in a similar fashion just using a different tool and that tool is available to you in Adobe Photoshop Elements. So once you have that photo in place um, then I'm going to go ahead and bring in another photo, file open and I have this other image. Uh, my daughter has already decorated her room and is fully ready for the holidays. You can see she has a small tree on her desk and a small jar of poinsettias as, as well as um, various um, other Christmas decorations. I took several photos and I decided not to use them in this particular layout partly because I want to, to focus on the photo of her and then I also wanted to have a selection of photos that were similar to one another and worked well together and then also too I know that with another 24 days to go I probably will have opportunity to be able to do another post um, about the decor in the house and it could be that I end up doing um, a, a complete page about Ella and her obsession with, with decoration. This particular page I want it to be about being ready. Um, Ella is so ready for Christmas it's not even funny at this point. So I'm going to select um, my image here and or the 
photo mask layer and then I'm going to drag that photo on top and you can see if I move it around uh, we've got lots of different options on the focus that we want to bring to that particular frame you know I was kind of trying to decide do I want to focus on the tree um, which would work very well with our photo um, or do I want to focus on the poinsettia and the gingerbread house and of course this particular page or this particular photo shows Ella creating a gingerbread house so by bringing in a previous gingerbread house from a different year that she got um, I felt like that was more appropriate there's going to be an opportunity later um, to share thoughts about the Christmas tree and um, there might be opportunity to bring that particular photo in there so I'm going to resize that image and then go control V sorry control alt G sorry um, get that one right so um, to clip a photo if you wanted to use the shortcut it's control alt G not control V um, that is to paste an image or of course you can go let's just close this out we'll close this one out you can go up to um, layer and then uh, release cl clipping mask or layer create clipping mask whichever you prefer and then again you can go to image adjustments levels and we can increase the contrast of that another thing you can do in Photoshop too you can see that we have a light area and we have a dark area of our photo and you can lighten that area up by going to image adjustments shadow and highlights and you can see how you can adjust these levers to make them lighter or darker click OK and then go to layer image adjustments levels and we'll just increase that contrast a little bit and it just lightens up the photo and I'm pretty happy um, with the way that this looks this is very much a kind of memory keeping page but one of my goals for this project is to actually have a little fun with the artistry so some of my pages may not have photos on at all and they may just play with the art um, definitely this idea of reflection in December is a kind of an art journaling approach so I really want to kind of make the time to use some of those um, some of those digital art supplies that I haven't used throughout the year and try on some of the techniques that I've learned this year and really haven't had much time to experiment with so once we have our photos in place my next kind of goal is to start adding in the supplies around it um, you can see that on my template we've got these blue lines and these are bleed lines and I'm going to be talking about those in class and how important they are and I'm also going to be talking about these edges and how to handle those if you intend on having your pages printed either in a photo book or in um, on a kind of a print where the edges are going to be trimmed so I'm going to select the background layer and I'm going to go to my supplies and you can see that I have in a working folder here and so there'll be lots of information in the class on how I go about organizing my supplies and how I go about organizing my photos for um, one of these types of projects so I'm going to work with art play palette kinsfolk which is not a Christmas um, Christmas kit and um, your project doesn't even have to be Christmas related I like to tie in a little bit of Christmas spirit I think it's going to be really neat 20 years from now to have all of these different Christmas books that we can look back over the years but not all of my pages are using Christmas photos or have anything to do with Christmas and of course because we're currently still in November it's not really Christmas yet so I decided that this full palette would be perfect and it just goes to show how you can dress up a regular palette that's not themed and make it themed simply by using color and perhaps a few elements so I'm going to make it this easy on myself and use an artsy paper um, later in this course I'll be experimenting with creating my own artsy backgrounds by using solid papers and showing you how to use transfers and artsy transfers um, in coordination with um, the solid papers but today I'm just going to go with an artsy background and you can see how that kind of adds instant interest to our page but we've got a lot going on with this overlay so I'm just going to go ahead and switch that off for now um, and we can see the details of the paper much better 
We've also got some of these tape areas that I left in. I, you, I, you watched me kind of separate the two elements on that particular layer, but um, there's a lot going on here, so I don't think that we necessarily need that layer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, this one, however, I like. It might be a good idea for us to pull that though on top of the frame so it looks like it's kind of adhering that frame down and it's kind of um, off on its own here. We've got some grays happening but I kind of want this to be more brown so let's go and um, change the color of that by going to edit fill and going to color and we'll stick with that nice brown ensure the preserve transparency box is checked and you can see how that makes a difference. The other thing that you can do with some of these layers is to add some blending modes. So if you wanted to apply a linear burn blending mode or a multiply for example, and it might be you want to add um, a blending mode to one of these stains. So there's linear burn or even color burn. Um, it's a little too dark overlay. It gives you an idea of some of the ways you could go. Linear burn is pretty cool and if you go to image adjustments and levels again it allows you to lighten that up just slightly if you um, find that it's a little bit too dark and then click OK. So once we have our imagery in, in place um, you can decide if you want to keep these um, hipster plumes is what I call them, flourishes, swirls. You can decide if you want to keep them or if you want to turn them off. It might be that if you're doing a Christmas page that you want to replace that imagery with um, other um, Christmas themed brushes or um, other brushes of your choice. I quite like them. Um, you can see I have these hipster plumes on one um, layer. So you could separate those or you can just make a selection and then go to edit and then just fill, check the color. I'm going to fill that one with white. Um, just kind of gives a, um, a very subtle um, approach, but it only notice when you make the selection around it, it just recolors that one um, hipster plume or that one image. And then this one, for example, we can go to edit fill and perhaps go with, um, maybe we try green just to bring when you bring in these festive colors it certainly adds a festive look so you can go with that green if you don't like the tone of that you can go to adjustments and hue and saturation and then you just move the hue lever and this allows you to kind of have a, a bit of a view on the fly of, of some of the other options that you can have you can also increase the saturation so make that hue brighter if you want to and then you can also make it darker so it's really just a question of playing with these levers until you find something you like. And I kind of like that color. It's a, it's a purpley kind of um, brown, very close to the red. It just coordinates with all the colors. So click OK. And then if you want to do select or deselect or control D, and then you can select the other one and then maybe mirror it. It's really good idea to, when you're using a color, to try and repeat those colors a number of times. Notice how the red creates a visual triangle and draws the eye around the page. Similarly, we've got these three different hipster plumes and even though they're different colors, we've still got this triangle of design going on. So let's go to Edit Fill and we'll just do a sample but maybe go with just a slightly lighter version of that color and then click OK and you can apply a blending mode from the layers panel um, just to kind of it looks like it blending modes almost allow you with some of them to kind of burn that color slightly into um, the paper and provide a bit more depth so that's the kind of the recoloring there I'm just noticing there's um, a, little, a bit of an area here that needs a bit more work so I'm just going to make sure that we have that edit. It must be, sometimes you have to find out what it is that's causing the, um, the problem with the particular mask and it looks like it's actually on her, on the actual photo, it just must be some of the um, the light that's kind of shining off her face which is why we've got that but we'll add some glows and things to kind of take the attention away from that the other thing we can do too of course is to move it up and to make that 
more intentional. So just um, a couple of workarounds there for when you run into these different problems. So I'm kind of, I want the focus to be on what's happening on the table and on her, but I'm not loving the dog toys in the basket in the back here. So one of the things I like to do in these sorts of situations is to use transfers to cover up some of these areas. So let's go to File, Open, and Navigate to the transfers and overlays. And um, it's just really a process of kind of elimination and finding which one's going to work for you. I'm just going to select this one because this one looks kind of fun with the postage mark and it's got some nice angles in it. And I'm going to drag that onto the page. And then you have the option again of rotating it. Um, if you want to, that looks pretty good. Notice how that covers it up nicely and it kind of just brings a level of interest to our page. You can also resize it as you prefer and then click OK when you've got it how you want it and then use that eraser tool there just to kind of erase any areas that are bothering you and see how we've covered that up nicely. Close that transfer out and that paper out and now I'm going to go to file open and another um, product I like to use especially at Christmas to add a bit of magic is, are the, um, the photo gloves. Um, I particularly like the warm gloves so if you just bring in one of those, this is a real simple one with some stars in it, we can bring that over, you can see how that adds a bit of magic to our page. And then you can go ahead and you can change the color of, the, of that, again by using the hue and saturation, you can make it a little bit less colorful and then maybe add a bit of light to it. And then you can go ahead and add different blending modes. Obviously different blending modes are going to allow or change the properties of the photo glow to allow more light or to allow some of the underlying layers to show through. Um, I actually want this particular photo glow to mask some of that a little bit. So I've added a screen blending mode and then if you duplicate that you can increase the intensity so you can see the subtle light and how it really has gone ahead and hidden those areas of the photo that I'm not interested in. Um, there's also this bone in the background here which I could leave in as it is a product of our home life in, in that we have dogs and there's dog bones everywhere. Um, in future sessions I'll show you how to clone those out of your photos. And then finally, it really just comes down to embellishing the page. Um, I am going to bring in, close this element. We'll bring in a couple of elements from that art play palette. Navigate to the elements folder, and then we can bring in a couple of elements because it's still full. We'll bring in this one, but you'll notice that the colors are all a bit wrong. Um, obviously there's no orange and it would be really nice to support the colors in my photo with the red. So there's lots of different ways you can recolor elements. Um, one of my favorite ways is to use the quick selection tool um, to select the area that you actually want to recolor. And then again it's the same um, principle as when we recolored the hips of plumes because you've selected just the area that you want to recolor that the, when you actually go and, um, and, and add the recoloring, it's just going to apply that recoloring to that particular um, berry. And you've got two different, a couple of different options here. If you're working in Photoshop, you can actually use the color replacement tool and this allows, the, 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 um, this allows you to basically um, recolor a berry the same tone. Um, so if I go ahead and just sample one of these red colors, go with a kind of a mid it kind of red then click OK and then paint over it you can see how it changes the berry to pink not really what we want so I'm going to go to undo replacement tool so instead I'm going to go to image adjustments hue and saturation and we're going to select the reds from the master list and then this allows me to change just the reds in the image and then you can do the same too for yellows if you wanted to change the yellows. And you can see how we're able to bring more red tones into that berry. And then click OK. Your other option as well is to go to, if you're working in Photoshop, 
um, the um, the hue and saturation is available in both Photoshop and Elements. Um, if you're working in Photoshop, you can go to Adjustments and Selective Color, and you can make colors based um, change the colors based on the different tones in the image. So you can make it more pink or more yellow or more orange. So I'm just kind of playing with it until I get it how I want it. And then the other thing that I like to do as well is to create a new layer. We'll go back to the regular brush tool and select that Anablends Artsy brush. And we'll just get a nice kind of gray there. Might want to just kind of make that brush a bit smaller and then apply a color blur burn blending mode. And you can see how that brings some depth. You can change the opacity. Um, just to kind of make it a bit more realistic. And then if you go to select inverse, then this will, and reselect the element layer, this allows us to change uh, the, the color of the rest of the image. And I just want to take a, a bit of the yellow tone out of that and give it a more of a kind of a grayish tone. So let's go to image adjustment hue and saturation. Uh, the reason I want to do that is because I kind of feel that um, yellow is a bit more kind of autumn, whereas as the winter approaches we're getting a bit more gray and um, it also makes the element less prominent so that we are still focused on the photo. You never want to make your um, embellishments more um, visually eye-catching than your images so kind of that's a good way to tone them down and then we'll just boost the contrast by going to image adjustments levels and then get that like so and then click OK, select, deselect, and then let's go to File Open, see if there's something else that we can add here. Maybe we'll go ahead and add this ribbon. You'll notice that I'm just using the PNG versions. You can use the PSD versions if you have a desire to change the shadows. I quite like this bow, and of course it's the wrong color again, but we can change that by going to Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation and just changing that, changing the tone of it. And you can increase the contrast again by going to image adjustments levels and just kicking that lever up there, and just making it a bit brighter, it kind of makes it pop. So that's a couple of embellishments added. Um, that's always the kind of the fun part to add the embellishments. You want to be careful not to cover the, the important parts of your photo. I want to make sure that we can still see this Lego gingerbread house that she received a few years ago in her advent calendar. And then of course we want to see the pranzetta. Pr um, you know, we've covered up the pranzetta on the table here, but it doesn't matter because it's represented here. Um, there's no need for du duplication. You know, really the, the goal here is to see the joy in her face, to see that she's crafting. Um, she's crafting a Christmas for sure. And then, of course, she, you know, the decorations in her room. And then at this point, you might want to start thinking about the words. I usually do add some words. If you're a digital artist, it might not be in your your kind of interest to add the words and that's totally fine um, at this point then your work is kind of done you could perhaps go a go on and add some filters to your image I'm going to be kind of adding those into my images I'm going to be adding some special effects I'm going to be adding all different things um, using some of my iPhone apps to add cool images I really want to get creative with this project and um, share those techniques with you so that you can start adding them either into your project or into your pages as we move in to 2017. So typically I don't add a title. It's one of those things. I pick a word. Um, it's kind of a reflection. I have a thought or a feeling about my day um, every day from the 1st to the 25th of December and I come up with a word that kind of describes how I'm feeling that day and that's the word that kind of motivates my page. So in this particular case I came up with the word organized. Ella is efficient and organized when it comes to um, parties and celebrating and, and occasions but I thought organized was a bit boring and I think I've used it previously so this is where a thesaurus kind of comes in and I'll go online to thesaurus.com and I'll put in the word organized and then it'll pop up and it'll show you a bunch of different words that are similar to the word organized and I really like the word ready it really seems to be a great word that would describe 
um, kind of where we are at at the middle of November usually at this time of year I kind of am dreading Christmas but this year with this project and some of the other things that I've got going on I'm really excited about this holiday season and so Ready really does kind of um, embody the feeling that I have as we go into the holidays. You remember that I said that this is very much kind of an art journaling kind of meets digital scrapbooking meets artistry class. There's definitely a little bit of everything and in previous years I've I've gone very simplistic and I've done a lot of duplication but this year I really want to enjoy the process and um, make sure that I'm being super creative with this this particular project. Um, so I'm going to be adding lots of different elements into into my pages and you can see right now I'm just moving these text boxes just so that they fit within the elements. We've got some lovely grasses that are coming out um, from behind the photo that are on the page and I'm just making sure that my text boxes so that when I do add um, my words to this particular page that they're not overlapping um, those important elements. So notice that I am clicking on the text, um, making sure that we have the bounding box available and I'm just dragging those edges in and out to make sure they fit. And you can change the orientation too if you want to um, of, the, of the particular text. So I'll go ahead and I'll add the journaling later. Um, it regards the title, so going back to this whole idea of selecting one word to kind of prompt your page, I will usually just write that at the beginning of my text and I'll bold it and do a full stop. Sometimes I have a, um, sometimes I have a title, um, it's usually a ready-made word art from the word art category of the Anna Aspinus Design Store. And then other times it's a transfer or it is a, um, a brush or something like that, something that will add kind of meaning to my page. So I've got the family word mix that actually coordinates with um, with Kinspoke. It doesn't really have too much to do with um, this page, but I often find that there's certain elements within any um, of the word art sets that can be used. And one of the ones that I really liked with this particular was close. Um, ready and close seem to have meaning, um, similar meaning to me. So I'm going to add this just word art title. We might need to drag it up the layers panel to make sure that it goes onto our page. And you can see how I'm lining up those lines um, to create some alignment in my page. And that just about does the trick. So for the people that have signed up for my class, um, they will be getting some bonus content um, for this day one layout and um, I will be adding that to their Dropbox folder um, when the time comes. Oh, and I also have just noticed too, and it's always a good idea when you've created a layout, is to have a good scan of it. You can see here in the center of the page, I've got that tape that I Drop that I kind of copied and paste, pasted and I didn't actually do anything with it and so that was kind of distorting over my page. So it's always a good idea to have a good scan around and just make sure that you've done your job in, des in the design and that the elements are leading your eye around all elements of the page. And I can go ahead and you can see how I can continue that line. It's, it's a dog bed in the background and I can align that tape up with that dog bed if I wanted to. It's the wrong color so let's go to edit fill and make sure we have a brown selected and then click OK. So that's going to lighten it up a little bit. We can add a multiply blending mode that is also going to help it kind of blend in with the surroundings and you might want to just get that eraser tool and you can customize that brush and just erase some of the edges away you can change the opacity or you can turn it off completely, so whichever you prefer. And then you're going to go ahead and save. So you can go to File, Save As. I'm going to save it as page one. And that is how I created the first page of my layout. Again, this is the first page in the project template album number two, which is available from the Anna Aspinus Design Store at O Scraps, and I'll make sure that I add the supplies to the the footnote of this particular video. 
Thanks for watching and if you're interested in joining me for the rest of the videos then please go to AnnaAspinasDesigns.com and access the classes tab where you'll be able to enroll for, for class and I will be in touch almost immediately um, with a coupon. Um, first of all if you purchase the class then you also get $10 off the templates and then also too um, I'm going to be starting to send out some of the pre-planning content of the sorts of things that you can be thinking about as we make a run up to the 1st of December as well as um, some suggestions for different types of albums that you can approach. Again, it doesn't really matter whether you have children or not, whether you are alone this Christmas or you have many people, whether you um, have years before you or ahead of you. Um, I think that anybody can tackle a project at this time of year. It kind of instills gratitude um, for this time of year. It, it, it it's it's kind of a sign that we have um, you know survived another year and been able to live another year and experience another year and um, celebrate all that that entails um, through our photos and of course um, artistry and being creative around the holidays helps to keep us a little bit sane too so again thanks for watching and I hope to see you in class soon take care bye bye